So now we're going to discuss sequences, and in particular numerical sequences. Uh, in this course, we will be mainly interested in sequences of real numbers. So here are some examples of sequences that we are familiar with. So of course, the first sequence that we ever, ever encounter in our life is this arithmetic sequence, or the sequence of natural numbers that we learn when we learn how to count. And of course, another very famous type of sequences is the geometric sequence, where every factor is multiplication of the previous one by some constant factor. So here, every time the next element is the double of the previous one, and here we add one. So we have this geometric sequence, and of course we can form more complicated sequences. For example, we can take those two sequences and mix them together and intertwine them. So this sequence, uh, the elements of this sequence are going to be here on odd places, and the elements of this sequence are going to be on the even uh, places. So we get this mixed sequence, right? And often, uh, in some logical puzzles, we're being asked to guess the next element in the sequence. So for this particular sequence, we see that uh, we constantly add two, so this is an arithmetic sequence, and our most natural guess would be, or the first guess would be, that the next element should be eight. But as we will see, um, the specifying an infinite sequence, uh, or potentially infinite sequence, by uh, only finitely many elements is, is impossible, and so this sequence uh, it is not well defined in general. So each such specification of finitely many elements, when we have finitely many elements uh, of, of a given sequence, there are actually infinitely many ways to complete this sequence. But still we, we think that there is some rule for generating the next elements from the previous ones, right? And so this will lead us to the definition of how should we define a sequence as, as something logical, right? And of course, we will be interested in sequences of real numbers, and only infinite sequences will be of interest. And so one attempt uh, to, to define a sequence, as I was saying, is that to say that uh, if a sequence is formed when we have some logical rule to generate the next element from the previous ones, or to generate all the elements in the sequence. As for example, in, in this sequence, we start with two, and then the next element is obtained from the previous one by adding two, or we could write some formula, right? Okay, so uh, this rule of assignment is almost accurate, right? Uh, we know a term in mathematics that is uh, that we use for rule of assignment, but to say that there is some logical rule is not rigorous enough uh, to be uh, to define it, you know, as, as a math mathematical definition. So saying this just abstract rule or logical rule is not a good enough of a definition. But we have something very close to rule of assignment, and this is the notion of function. So if you want to define a sequence, so a rigorous definition of a sequence would be that a sequence is actually a function that assigns to every natural number a real number. This would be a real sequence, right? A sequence of real numbers. So, and when we say function, this becomes very rigorous, and this intuitive notion of rule of assignment is underlined, right? So, uh, to any element uh, of the natural number, to each number, natural number, we assign a real number. And so uh, we denote by a n the value of this a function at the natural number n. And this a n is called the nth element of the sequence. And we think of a sequence as this ordered collection, an infinite collection of numbers, real numbers in this case, a1 up to a n, and it goes indefinitely. So this ordered infinite collection that is obtained in this way by listing all the values of this given function is a sequence, and this is how we denote it. Now, it somewhat reminds us, uh, curly brackets reminds us a notation of set, but just a word of caution here, because in set, uh, the only thing that matters in sets is just the elements uh, and not the order. So two sets can be considered equal if they have the same elements, but listed in different orders. Here, the order matters. So it's this, so to say, ordered collection. We have to keep this in mind, right? And in general, now we see that uh, with this definition, as we defined a sequence to be a function from natural numbers to the real numbers, we see that in order to define a sequence, all, all we need is just a function from natural numbers to some set. All we really need is that for this function to be defined, and then any rule of assignment that assigns to a natural number an element of another set is a sequence. So we have a very general way of defining sequences. And so we could have sequences of 
uh, natural numbers, uh, rational numbers, real numbers, integer numbers. We could have a sequence of complex numbers. We can have a sequence of points in plane. We could have sequence of points in uh, some abstract n-dimensional space. We could have sequences of sets, and we can have sequences of functions, right? So it's a very general term. Okay, so here are some ways in which we can define a sequence. We need to define this function. So one way is to give an explicit formula. So uh, remember that we said that a, this a is a function. So here is how we specify it. We give for each uh, n how we compute the value of the function for, for this n. So this is explicit formula. So that's, uh, that's a way of specifying a sequence. And this is the direct and most common way to specify a sequence. But there are ways to specify a sequence, for example, by this algorithm, right? So we could say that a n is the n's digit in, for example, the decimal expansion of pi. So the first element would be a one would be three, and then a two would be one, etc. And so this sequence has very complicated behavior, and we're not specifying all the sequence. And, and as far as it is known, and, and today it's an open question, there is no formula to generate all, all the numbers. So someone who would want to uh, find the nth element would have to compute it. Uh, there is no uh, like simple formula which we can plug in and, and get those numbers. Okay, and there's also this famous Fibonacci sequence when we define the sequence by an algorithm again. So we say that uh, the first element is one and the second element is also one, and then for every uh, n that is greater than two, we can compute the next element uh, from its two predecessors. And this is the rule for, for computation. So of course we can uh, use this rule to compute that a3 is two, and then that um, a4 is 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 two plus one, which is uh, three, etc. And uh, it is somewhat surprising, but a general formula in this case can be found, although it was specified algorithmically uh, in terms of we need to compute this. This general formula can be uh, it can be proved that this general formula gives the nth element. So this is the golden ratio, right? How what does it do here? How does this appear here? And this is uh, called a negative golden ratio and these are irrational numbers and all those are supposed to be integers. And, and in fact, this formula gives all integer numbers, but this is a discussion for another lecture. Okay, so how would we visualize uh, a sequence? If we want to see it visually, uh, currently it's something abstract. So of course we have this way to think of this as a function and it's a natural way, there is a natural way uh, that we will see to think of this function, of this sequence as a sampling of a function or of a continuous function or a function which is given by a formula, which we will see. And it's a very important and useful way of thinking in signal processing. When we have some si signal, for example, the signal of my speech, which uh, I'm talking, is being converted to a digital sequence of numbers, which is stored on the computer and which the computer can decode and reproduce the sound. But of course, it's not a continuous sequence. It's a sequence that uh, was sampled by the microphone at discrete elements of time of this continuous sig signal of my speech. Okay, and so uh, if we're thinking about it this way, so we if we have a function that is defined on the natural numbers into the real numbers, then uh, to each n corresponds this a n, and we can plot this by a collection of points, which we'll sh shortly see how. And in addition, uh, we will often um, and to visualize a sequence, we will think of it as a sequence that lies or on the x-axis or on the y-axis, and then we would plot those points to see the sequence. So let us now see a visual way of um, visualizing, of seeing a sequence and its elements.